This is Wrecked, the bonus episode where I either recommend a book or I wreck it. Hello everyone, I'm Karina Pereira and today is the Everlast episode of the season. I know I said this on the last episode, but that was the main episode. This is a bonus episode and it's really the last one. And for the last episode, I was going to record this episode from scratch, but then I remember that I had made um, a pre-recording of this, a sort of practice recording because of what I wanted to talk about. And today I was listening back to that episode and I cannot not post it. There is nothing that I could have done today that was going to be anything close to that episode. I think Like, of course, this is my opinion and it's my own view on the things that I'm recording. But I think that is by far the best episode I've put up so far. And I know the sound isn't perfect because I recorded it on my phone. But I did my best to edit it the best I can sound-wise. But quality-wise or content-wise, I think this is the best thing I've ever recorded. And because there's already a spoiler in the title and I'm going to talk about this further on, I talk about Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. This is the last recommendation or wreckage of the year and of the season. Please let me know what you think. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you all again in January for season two of the podcast. Thank you for being on that side this whole year. Thank you. I've just realized that since I've started this wrecked, this bonus episode, I either recommend the book or wreck it, I have mostly recommended books because, well, it's not nice to be mean you know or I rather I mean sometimes it's really nice to be mean and you know it just feels very good but usually the feeling doesn't last very long and we I just feel terrible about being such an ass but the reason why I actually started this bonus episode was because I had so much stuff to say about two books that I've read, like bad stuff, like really, I wanted to really wreck those books. And that's how, that's why I started this, uh, this bonus episode, because I kind of wanted to vent here and to put everything out there, all my anger towards these books. But then, yeah, as time went on, as I started recording more and more bonus episodes, I realized that I had more fun or that I wanted people to actually read books that I thought were worth reading more than I wanted to say shit about other books. Because saying shit about the other books really is only good for myself and only for a period of time. Because after I said shit about it, I'm happy, but nobody gets anything from it. I don't get anything from it, except that short satisfaction. And... You don't get anything from it because I think people, even when someone tells you that a book is terrible, you should still read it, you know, just to get your own opinion and maybe you will love a book or and find interesting and important things and important lessons in a book that I think it's terrible. So there's that and that's why most of them have been recommendations and even though like on next season, season two, I want to change these wrecked episodes a bit, I am still going to talk about books, specific books, um, and I'm still going to recommend books that I think everybody should read. I think it's a better job and I'm doing a better job for myself and for everyone else by recommending books that I am about, you know, wrecking them. But to be fair, in the last year, this year, I haven't really read any book or actually I haven't read a lot of books that I really say oh my god I hated this book so much that I really need to talk about it and that I really need to say something about it because this is freaking terrible that hasn't happened I've been reading quite good books um but (laughs) because the um, first season of the podcast is finishing I thought why not make this last episode about a book that I pretty much disliked. I'm not going to use the word hate here because it's a bit strong and I don't like this kind of pessimism and bad vibes on the podcast, but that I truly disliked a little bit. Okay, 
the book, let's start by saying which book it is. It is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo. Why did I hate this book? Sorry. Why did I dislike this book? First of all, I came across the book because in every single bookstore, there was like loads of advertising about the book. One of the biggest, I would say maybe biggest bookstores here in the in the Netherlands, even though they are in the in Rotterdam, even though they are independent, which is Donner, had like a huge poster. So I was like, wow, they have like this huge poster. The book isn't even out. This book must be good. I kept seeing loads of people um, sharing the book, saying that it was amazing on Instagram and other social media. Um, so I thought, yeah, okay. I want to listen to this. I have a Storytel um, subscription, so I searched for it. They had it. I listened to it. I think either at work or even on my way to Rotterdam, because a few like I I only moved last year, so I always during the weekends I either went to Rotterdam to meet my boyfriend or my boyfriend would go to Belgium, because yes, I lived in Belgium for eight years, and like on my way I used on my way here, which is one hour and a half, I used to listen to audiobooks, and that's how. I managed to listen to 22 audiobooks in two months last year because I worked as a cleaning lady as well and most of the times I was alone so I could listen to audiobooks at work and some days I worked like eight hours a day so if if it's a short book I could put like a book and a half in it and then on the way to Rotterdam and on the way back one hour and a half each listening to audiobooks so I listened to a lot to a ton of audiobooks last year and I was listening to three women and like i understand that the stories this of course as it says in the title the story the the story the book is about three women three different stories but the book was advertised as like stories from by women that like you've never heard before you know like this is completely brand new completely different from everything you might have listened read or whatever and then you get into the stories first of all they never most stories about women have to have men in them okay which was a disappointment here as well this story is basically women and their their relationships with men period that was what it is which honestly it isn't exactly something new it isn't exactly something that you haven't heard anywhere else. It's actually everything that you hear pretty much about women is related to their relationships to men. Even sometimes to men. Even sometimes, you know, I've been paying attention sometimes to memoirs. And I would like someone because I, I don't have the, um, the tools or maybe I don't have the patience. But I would like someone to go check memoirs and see how long women, like from women and men, and check how long or how many hours do those people speak of the opposite sex, of the relationships that they had? How much men, for example, actors or someone was like a public figure, speaks about their jobs and how much they speak about their relationships and women who are heterosexual and kind of check the same. And then I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm almost certain that in most situations, women talk a lot about, more about men and the relationships they have with men. And they care a lot more than men care about the relationships they have with women. But I don't have the data. No scientific data. So I can't say it's true or not. But that's the feeling I get from the memoirs that I have heard. So I went into three women thinking that the stories were going to be completely different. Even some, you know, LGBTQIA plus stuff there. But no. There are stories, there are three stories about women who fall in love with men, and those stories are not new. I've seen movies about that, I've read stories like on the newspapers about it, I've read books that tell similar stories than this. There was only one of the stories about a couple who has a restaurant that was slightly different from what we usually hear, but the other two, they were just textbook. Like, every, almost every story that is like, ooh, dramatic and and sad and emotional about women has some of the elements in those stories and I was so pissed off because I lost some time of my life just listening to that book I don't know how many hours doesn't matter being promised that (laughs) that the stories were going to be different and then you get to the end and the stories are exactly the same as as always like one of the stories is that which Another thing, I read My Dark Vanessa, I liked the book, it was pretty good, but 
this story just immediately reminded me, and sorry for the spoiler, but I have to say it, of one of the stories in Three Women, okay? And I was like, okay, uh, this it's the thing about my dark Vanessa that I didn't like. It just felt like the same story again. You've seen it in movies before, and and... I'm really glad that people are thinking and, you know, are coming to this conclusion that it's like the professor was an asshole and he groomed her. But I had some trouble dealing with the way that Vanessa works, although worked with everything. Although, of course, that's my fault. And it's it's the way that I was taught probably and raised because she was so naive. Even when she was an adult, she couldn't just get away from it but I mean it's a psychological thing as well so I can't really blame Vanessa and I don't blame Vanessa but that that it was a bit frustrating to uh, you know from outside seeing what she was going through and what she was doing about it but when I read my dark Vanessa immediately I thought well this is very similar or there are you know elements that are super similar to (laughs) to that story from three women so when I finished the book and I realized is this it I was so freaking upset, and I'm talking about three women again, not my dark Vanessa. I was so upset because I don't know who did the marketing campaign for this book, but damn, they're good. Because they were selling something as completely new, and it's not. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that these women's stories aren't worth listening to or reading or a worth of media attention. They are, of course, they're valid. They they happen, obviously. I mean, they happen so much that they were new for me. But what, why are you advertising it, this book, as being something completely new? Who did this? Like, who said, okay, we're going to make a marketing campaign and the marketing campaign is going to say that the book is like never anything, nothing you've ever seen before. And then... I get to the stories like, this is like everything I've ever seen before. Like, actually, this is exactly what I've been seeing, like, this whole time. So, I don't know who did this, but they're good, so... And they wanted the book to sell, obviously, very much. And that really, that really pissed me off. They're trying to to pass off a story... Oh, 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 and something else. What actually pissed me off the most was that... The writing was almost pornographic. You're talking like erotic. You're talking about about these women going through this emotional consternation and and sadness and, and turmoil. And it's written as if it was made, as if it was written to appease a male audience. It's great. Okay, granted... Women like erotism as well, but the the way that these women were, you know, described and and the situations, I really had a feeling that, like, this is kind of like, almost like porn, but for, to appease a male, a male eye. And there's one sentence in the whole book that really got to me, so much so that I made a note on my um, iPod that I was listening to at the time, and I still have the note, and the quote goes like this. And this is an actual sentence in this book, and it's maybe the worst, I guess, because I took a note of it, but it's not the only one that is bad. But it's written, the roots of her teeth tingle with excitement. The roots of her teeth tingle with excitement. The roots of her teeth tingle with excitement like do you hear do you, do you hear this the, who wrote this okay i know who wrote this but why why would you write something so stupid the roots of your teeth do nothing unless you have like an infection and then you have to go to the dentist and get a, 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 a root canal i was a dental assistant for four years so i know what i'm talking about the roots of your teeth tingling is not a good thing as as you know as it's made to be in this book. It's just not. It's a terrible thing to happen. What the heck? I wrote so hard to do with excitement. They, they definitely don't tingle when, when you're excited about a man or anything at all. They just don't. I, I don't know. It just threw me off. So yeah, I'm pretty certain that if I was reading the book, I could take more notes about things badly written. But this one kind of took the cake. And it's, again, unfortunately, a sort of a representation of of the writing in the book, which sometimes just made me cringe. And I was just really disappointed. Especially because, you know, when you go into a book, like, all pumped up and you're like, yeah, this book is amazing. Everybody's been talking about it. I'm so excited to read it. And then you get there, it's like, 
Ah, I was lied to. And I know that this is a personal thing, of course, because many people, I'm sure, even people listening, that they have loved this book, but just didn't cut it for me. Just didn't. And again, it was, well, you know, not everything is bad. Because one of the reasons why I decided again to create this bonus episode to talk about books was because of all the rant that I wanted to do about this book. And now that I have, and I'm going to take back everything I said at the beginning about how this doesn't do anything for anyone because I'm so relieved. I'm feeling so well after this. Like my my soul has been cleansed, even my body. I'm pretty certain that if I look at myself in the mirror right now, my pores will be just completely shut and 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 beautiful my skin is hydrated because this was great this was great so maybe maybe i should start doing more of this just saying shit about books that i disliked (laughs) and to make myself feel better and to get all the tension and all the stress out of myself but yeah again if you're thinking about reading this book or you have it on your to be read go for it Don't let my opinion um, make you not read it, because that is not why I'm here. That's not the point. And I'm pretty sure that we will learn many lessons and that you learn many lessons from this book. Especially that men are assholes. Not in general, but, you know, as a group and not as individuals. Um, And and it, it just will probably... Which I think this is the worst... The worst is that you go back and you look at yourself a few years ago. I speak for myself. I look at myself in my adolescent years and and even young adult and I think, wow, I was this fucking stupid. I was this stupid. Like, And maybe that's why I didn't like the book either because I'm seeing in some things, I'm seeing a reflection of myself and I don't like it. I don't like being called out like this. So because I, I think a lot of women have gone through, especially young, as they were young, gone through certain situations that are in the book even if it's like like not the main story Uh, there are situations that you do relate to and you know now you know better so now you wouldn't be that stupid but you were that stupid and you know it and that's the truth and that's why you don't like what you're seeing and that's why you think they're being stupid because they are because you were you were also being stupid when you were younger but still again I kind of feel like I was clickbaited into reading the book and I didn't like that. And uh, as if it's not obvious, this is a wreckage. Or maybe I should say a recommendation. I don't know, but I didn't like it. Anyway, I'll be back in two weeks with a new episode, a regular episode. No, I will not. What am I saying? I will not. I'm going to make, actually, I'm going to take a break of a few, of a month or so, or a few weeks um, to prepare season two, because for season two, I want to have more people, actually, I want to have more, by more people, I mean someone else other than me, because I'm the only person who's been on this season, speaking to myself and to whoever is listening, but on season two, I made some plans, I want to have people on the, um, on the podcast, I am even thinking about changing Wrecked a little bit and to make Wrecked not only a place where I can recommend or wreck books, but also a place where people can tell interesting stories, or, and then the main episodes I, I can actually talk about, um, also with other people, about projects, about their love for books, so I want to, yeah, dynamize, 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 dynamize the um, podcast a little bit, and I'm going to do this on season two, but for that, I cannot continue to do a podcast the way that I do, because most weeks, I do, like, I do a podcast, the podcast every other Monday, so every two weeks, and sometimes I'm writing a script, this is, this one is unscripted, by the way, I'm writing a script, recording, editing, and publishing on the same day, because I'm a procrastinator, and that's what I do, as Calvin and Hobbes would, would say better than me. My inspiration is the panic of the deadline. And so most of the times I I was just like, oh, I have two weeks to do this. I have two weeks to think about the podcast and record it and edit it. And every time I'm either recording it day before or on the day that I need to publish it. So 
I want to change that for next month in case something happens that doesn't allow me to, you know, record on the day as it has happened like in, in this season. There, there was one week that I posted on a Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, there you go. So this doesn't always happen, doesn't always uh, work. And I want to, like I said, I want to bring people to the, um, to the podcast. So I'm going to stop for about a month and I'll be back probably in January, hopefully with new people with interesting conversations everything will have to be done or most of it will have to be done remotely but i'm confident that it will work and i'll see you again soon don't forget to subscribe so you get a notification when i'm back you can follow me on instagram under a story of sorts because that's where i am most active where i have most news to post and all of my other social media is at linktree slash Karina Pereira. I'll leave the links to that on the show's comments and notes. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much to those of you who have been with me throughout the whole season. And I'll see you soon for season two. Talk to you then.